Hi folks, Damon here. I want to talk to you a little bit about EMR on EKS. I'm going to do three demos right now. Uh, step one is going to be job creation and app UI. Then I'm going to talk about logging and monitoring. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, job optimization and how to customize how and where your jobs run on EMR on EKS. So first, let's start with uh, job creation and the app UI. So I've got a handy little demo here that I'm going to kind of switch over to. Uh, first, all I want to do is just create a simple job using a built-in PySpark script. So let me walk through really quickly what's happening here. With EMR on EKS, uh, let me switch over to my Amazon console. So if you're familiar with EMR at all, typically, uh, or historically I should say, EMR code ran on EC2 instances. So you had to pick your instance type, uh, select how many of them you wanted, and spin those up. So if you're used to the EMR console at all, you can see over here uh, the standard clusters, notebooks, all that kind of good stuff. With EMR on EKS, you connect EMR to a virtual, or you connect EMR to an EKS cluster, and then that's called a virtual cluster in EMR. And then when you submit the job to EMR, it schedules the job on the EKS cluster for you. So I've created two different virtual clusters here. I've got my Decort virtual EMR and my Decort Fargate. And of course, I did use uh, underscores in this one and hyphens in this one. I apologize. I'll go back and modify that uh, for the proper demo. And so if I click into these uh, virtual clusters, what you can actually see is you can see the namespace that they're registered with in the EKS cluster, as well as all the different jobs that have run here in the past. And so I can go in here and I can see all the, do all the jobs, what the status of, those, of them was, and all that kind of fun stuff. If I click over to EKS, here's my EKS cluster. It's Decor EMR. I've got both managed node groups and Fargate in here, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. And then um, I also use the Kubernetes dashboard a little bit because it gives me a little bit of insight into what's happening on the actual uh, EKS cluster. You may or may not have access to that, but I will use it a little bit during this demo. So let me switch back to my code. I'm going to use the AWS command line interface to submit a simple PySpark job to EMR on EKS. So let's talk about a few of these. When I run this command, I specify my uh, virtual cluster ID, the name of the job. Every job is run with its own specific role. And so here you specify the role ARN that you want to use to run that job with. It just has to have the necessary uh, permissions to run that job. You can specify the version of EMR that you want. So this could be 5.x or 6.2 or what have you. And then down here is the important part, the Spark Submit Job Driver. So that tells us where does the code live and what are the parameters uh, that are going to be sent to Spark Submit. In this case, uh, we're just using a piece of example PySpark code that lives on the container itself. This comes with every version of Spark, just calculates uh, the value of pi or estimates the value of pi. And then we've got our Spark Submit parameters here. So similar to standard Spark, we're going to specify how many executor instances we want, how much memory we want, ex how much memory we want each executor to have, how many cores for the executor and for the driver. So that's all it is. I'm going to go here, copy this, paste it into my terminal, and hope that I still have access to the cluster. Great. I just got back an ID of the job. Uh, the ARN of the job, as well as the virtual cluster ID. So what's happening now is EMR is submitting this job to EKS. It's, going, it's got a job submitter that goes and runs on the EKS cluster. And then that schedules the driver, which schedules the tasks of the job. So if I refresh my EMR console here, you can see that I've got my sample pie job. It's been submitted and it's got 23 seconds to go. Back in the Kubernetes dashboard, if I refresh this, you can see now I've got a job submitter here. Um, all, the, all the pods have labels on them. So this pod is the job submitter pod that's uh, creating the container right now. If I wanted to, I could look at the logs on here or whatnot, but I won't touch on that quite yet. And then now we see the Spark driver spinning up and pretty soon we'll see the executors spin up as well. If you have access to the EKS console, you can look in here and you can see your workloads and filter those by the namespace. And we should see our demo job running right here. So this is the job that got submitted a minute ago. I can click through to that job. And in the EKS console, I can see all the common stuff that is available to me, like what images are running, uh, what pods that's scheduled on, and more detail, You know what containers are running on those pods and what have you. So if I go back to the dashboard, uh, this will probably be wrapping up pretty quickly now. We see there's an executor here that is running. There's another one that's pending. Uh, one thing that I do have set up on this cluster, I do have the cluster auto scaler set up. So if, um, if the job needs more capacity, it'll go ahead and request more capacity. On the EKS side, what that looks like 
in my overview, you can see all the nodes that are part of my EKS cluster. And if I refresh this console right here, I might have another one that's currently in the process of spinning up. Uh, I'm not sure if we actually requested more or not, but um, it, it's, it didn't. So uh, what will happen though, if the uh, cluster autoscaler is installed and the job needs more resources, that will take care of provisioning them or if you're running on Fargate, Fargate will also auto provision new resources for you. So you don't have to worry about your node groups or you know what the minimum maximum size of them is and all that kind of stuff. So that job should be finished. If I go back to the EMR console right now, I can refresh this. And now we can see that's completed. So I'm in here and I can see on the right hand side here, I've got logs that I wanna be able to view. Uh, when I click this button, that goes ahead and spins up the Spark history server specific to this uh, actual job. So you can use it for completed jobs, you can use it for currently running jobs, but this goes ahead and spins up a Spark history server for that specific job. So you can kind of dive in and see what's happening there. Uh, the other nice thing about this is it kind of spins it up outside of the EKS cluster. And so you don't necessarily need access to the driver on the EKS cluster or you know, to log in to um, uh, however you might be able to access that, that EKS cluster. So this is kind of separate outside of the EKS cluster. And so that'll pull up and that'll show us both uh, currently running, the, if the job is currently running, it'll show it. If it completed, it'll uh, obviously show that too. And then I can click into the Spark job here and I can browse around uh, like I normally would for a Spark job. So I can see my event timeline and I can also see, uh, I can click through the to the executors and I can see how the executors ran and all that kind of good stuff. One thing to note in here is we'll see an error message pop up uh, once that executors page loads that we don't have cluster logging enabled. So right now, if you wanted to view the standard out and standard error logs in the Spark history server, you wouldn't be able to. You have to enable S3 logging in order for that uh, to show up in the Spark history server. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll talk about how to enable both CloudWatch and S3 monitoring for your EMR on EKS jobs.